Hi, it's Therese and I'm here for AllenHudson.com and this video is part of the Swing and Slide Interactive Card Week and today I'm going to be making two swinging scooter cards. I thought it would be a good idea to actually make two different types of swinging cards today just to give you a couple of options. Both of the cards are going to be using this awesome set from Alan and it's called Good Times and I thought it'd be really fun to have the scooter swinging from some balloons. So this particular set has its own balloons which is the ones that I've stamped out here. I have used Memento ink, I'm colouring some very simple Copic colouring today and I have stamped the balloons out twice because I wasn't sure if I was going to actually layer them up or if I was going to get away with just using one set. In the end I did actually manage to create this swing card just with the one set of balloons. Things that you need to consider are the size of the images that you are wanting to make the interactive card with and that was why I was thinking I might have needed too. Because it's a big scooter and the balloons were fairly small, I wasn't sure. I thought it was easier just to stamp them out and colour them up. If I needed them, I can always use them. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I find balloons very challenging <laughs> to colour. So these particular ones, I just did one layer of Copic and coloured the whole balloon and just kept it really simple. And this is probably the easier of the two swing card versions that I make today and the most clean and simple as well. I've made a really fast and easy panel here. It's cut the same size as the front of my card and I'm using my blender tool and a cloud stencil with some It's a Boy ink from Catherine Paula and just working my way down the panel to make a really quick and easy cloud background. I'm adding my sentiment now before I pop up the whole panel. It's from the Crafty Ladies Say stamp set. So I'm going to make my swinging element now. To work out where I want it, I've held my image in place, which I've joined together with some matte medium, made a mark with a pencil, and I'm going to die cut a very small circle. I've also die cut a couple of other circles, which are a little bit bigger, and I'm adding some matte medium, and this is a replenishment. It's a slide and swing replenishment from MFT and this is what makes it so easy. These little dots then they're made of plastic so they actually do swing and slide really easily but if you don't have one of these you could use a really small button if you have one or build up your own element with die cut pieces. The, just beware not to use a glue that will remain sticky after it dries like the Tombow Mono. That's why I've used the matte medium here because when it dries it isn't tacky or sticky. I've used a couple of extra replenishment dots there and the bottom wheels of my image just to make sure that it sits out off the card front and will swing and slide nicely. And to hold the whole thing together I've actually just added some matte medium to the other small die cut circle and adhered it to my image. I've added some fun foam to the back of my panel making sure to leave a nice big well and you can see there where the swingy um, bit on the back is from the other piece of die cut that I cut. So I've left lots of room around there so that it can swing without hitting the foam behind it. So I basically just looked through all my die sets until I found some really small circle dies and those ones that I used today came from the little lady die set but you can use whatever you've got. I Basically your sandwich ends up being a little die cut on the back and the front of the replenishment and that just adds, brings it together to make your swinging element. It's really easy this one and I think it swings really well too. And I added some shimmer to the balloons. Speaking of balloons, <laughs> oh, I have um, yeah, a lot of fun colouring balloons. I need to practice and so I did here. <laughs> this is part of a penny black image which is called birthday balloons. I've stamped it out with some tuxedo black and I just thought I'd share the colouring of one of the balloons with you. I've basically 
use my light color to color the whole base of the balloon except for a little leaving a little white highlight then I've come in with a darker tone of each of the colors because I've colored three different colors for all of the balloons and with the darker tone I've just come in off the edge of the balloon a little bit on the shadowed side and added an arc and then a very small arc on the other side where the highlight is which I then blend out with my lighter Copic marker and I did have to do the tip to tip technique with the pink balloons because that was a very, there was a really big difference in the dark to the light shade there's no sort of middle color there with that RV families but it seemed to work okay nice hot pink balloons so I stamped out my scooter again and this time I actually stamped the parcels that are in the stamp set good times on top of the seat so I'm going to be joining joining these two together with some matte medium after I've cut them out but I will have to cut both of these images out by hand because I can't use my coordinating die cuts but I won't show you that today <laughs> it does take a bit of time I've created some little hills using the landscape style from the Essentials by Allen collection and I'm popping it on a background of some gingham cardstock from Lawn Form and I'm using my tape runner to make sure that that's in place. And I did actually colour another image with some Copic markers thinking that I was going to go down uh, like a messy Copic marker kind of um, technique and you'll be able to see that card at the blog <laughs> because I didn't end up using that on this design I ended up using the one that you saw me color here because it looked better on the gingham and that's what changed up my whole design so I've attached the gingham to a piece of white cardstock added lots of adhesive in the area where I know the die cuts going to be and I'm using one of the swing and slide Archie kind of die cut so this is going to allow my scooter with this big bunch of balloons to swing and slide I don't like the idea of seeing the white cardstock behind the die cut so I kind of lined it up behind the actual die cut negative space and when I was happy with where it was lined up I just put some pencil marks on the front of my card and adhered a piece of scrap gingham cardstock directly to the front of my card and that way when my balloons are swinging if that die cut area shows there won't be any white cardstock visible it'll just look like the gingham, gingham <laughs> background behind it what I've done here is actually lay my whole image now I've joined the balloons and the scooter together with some matte medium and when I'm sort of happy with where it's going to be sitting I've flipped it all over and I've drawn where the die cut is on the back of my balloons because that's going to help me with the placement of my replenishment from the MFT so that I know it's going to be in the right spot I've added some waffle flower clouds which I've die cut if you are going to add any other elements to the background make sure that they're not popped up where the swinging image is going to be because they will stop it from swinging so either add them away from that area or directly to the front of the card here I'm just adding a bit of um, cardstock behind because I use the 80 pound Nina just to strengthen the balloons so I've drawn where the actual negative space was going to be <laughs> and now I know exactly where to stick my replenishment in retrospect I might have been better to use one of the circle replenishments here just so that it's spun or along that channel a bit better but um, this did work well these are more of an oval shape which work really well in all of these channels but because of the size of my image I was kind of wondering maybe if the circles might have been better I was just a bit worried it wouldn't be big enough and I've used my matte medium to adhere the scooter image as well as a circle that I've die cut to the back of it and I did wait for the glue to dry before I added the foam to the back of my panel and you'll notice I did leave another really big well so that the swinging mechanism is going to work 
I don't think this one swung quite as well as the other one, but there's definitely some swinging happening here. I hope you're inspired to try this technique. Don't forget all the links will be below to the Alan Hudson Classroom and to all the products that I've used here today. So thanks for joining me. Till next time. Bye.